Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Fantasy 420, where today we are going to be returning back to the gridiron and talking about some running backs. Uh, just like our quarterbacks video a few days ago, we're going to be discussing some running backs for the 2019 and 2020 season, who I like to make a possible tier jump to multi-tier jump in the upcoming fantasy football season. Once again, I would just like to reiterate that these are extremely early rankings and a lot can change via free agency, the draft, uh, injuries, preseason. So this is just an extremely early look uh, for us to see which running backs are most likely to, uh, given those situations, if they are the similar or the same, then we can expect these jumps. And um, these are going to be all running backs who finished outside Yahoo's top 12 running back rankings last year. So once again, these are guys who will either jump to an RB1 or make multiple tier jumps. The first name I'm going to start with is Derrick Henry. Obviously a very polarizing name in the fantasy football world. He did finish number 13 last year in the running back position. Uh, obviously on the negative side, he was awful for basically... <laughs> two and four fifths of uh, fantasy football seasons and there's gonna be a lot of scorned owners because of that but um last year he was obviously arguably the fantasy football playoffs mvp with three monster weeks in 14 15 and 16. so this year is going to be a new year given that information uh it's going to be which side are you going to fall on do you think he's going to disappoint or do you think he's going to make that jump and I think it's a lot more probable that he makes the jump um, he won those three games by he I mean the Titans his team uh, won those games when he put up those numbers so I have a feeling that they're gonna go into this season with that formula maybe Antonio Brown trade might change that but I think it's gonna be a run and play defense sort of team with Derrick Henry as the centerpiece he's obviously young those games were sort of an eye test role that he passed. And I think that role is pretty much going to be secure. He's going to be that pounded running back. Deion Lewis is going to spell him for passing downs and when he's tired. But overall, I think that upside is there. And he could easily finish as a top, you know, five, six running back if everything went well, uh, considering what happened at the end of last year. So uh, I might be betting on Derrick Henry as he makes that tier jump to a running back one next year. The next game I'm going to feature is Damian Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs. He finished 49th last year. He started the season in Miami, then was traded to Kansas City, then Kareem Hunt was suspended. So just like um, Derrick Henry, he played really well during the fantasy playoffs. So if we projected that onto this year with that same sort of role, which... Uh, He's most likely going to get uh, Spencer Ware is a free agent. So if he signs with any one of those any 31 teams, he's probably the projected starter going into next year. The draft, uh, if they sign another running back like Olivia Bell or something, once again, could change that. But we're just going to assume Damian Williams, maybe a Sharkandrick West re-signing. And um, if that happens, Damian Williams could definitely present a running back one value. He's on the Kansas City Chiefs, obviously the most explosive offense in the league last year. Uh, he is a receiving threat. Uh, he's primarily a receiving back, so that's why I would expect them to maybe re-sign Spencer Ware or get a bruiser. But with that being said, I would expect them him to be on the field the majority of the times as they would look to pass the ball a majority of the game. And with Kareem Hunt finishing 11th last year, if he was the primary primary person receiving the workload in that role, and that's number 11, obviously, with him missing five games, just the role is crazy. So if he's the primary recipient of that Kareem Hunt workload, we could be looking at a running back one Damian Williams next year. So name to keep on your radar. Uh, a little bit less obvious of a name, I feel, is Aaron Jones. He finished last year running back 23. Definitely has running back one value coming into this year. Um, passed the eye test at the end of the year. So I'm assuming they're not going to blow huge capital on a Le'Veon Bell or 
a Mark Ingram or a free agent or a draft capital running back. I'm pretty sure they're just going to be with, happy with him, Jamal Williams, and somewhat of that core that they had last year. So they have more holes to fill. This is just a new coach. There's going to be a lot of excitement. Aaron Rodgers is going to enter the season really happy. So this team is going to be, I think, on the upswing to start the year. And if they start the year on fire, the they could end up in the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers leading the helm, and he could end up beasting for the whole year. Obviously, another receiving back. And just like Derrick Henry, I think his floor this year is going to be high-end RB1. It's not just, okay, if all these other things fall into place, maybe he could reach this value. No, I think he's his value is going to be firmly set as an RB1 with upside for high-end RB1 with uh, that team and that situation. A couple more names I'm going to end on. These guys are obviously me projecting a little bit more and a little bit risky, but I do like their situations a little bit more for various reasons than names that we will end the video on. Rashad Penny finished last year as the 67th player. He was a first-round pick of the Seattle Seahawks, and he flashed a few games last year, and I do believe in his talent and Pete Carroll's ability to uh, pick running backs who are going to succeed in that system. Carson did finish number 14 overall last year. Mike Davis finished uh, number 37. And I, if any of those guys are gone, or if that role consolidates into Rashad Penny starting the season as the number one back, then I think he could end up the season as a number one. Like I said, if you if he flashes or if he even gets that role out of camp, if you add up all those guys' stats together, it's a low-end RB1. They ran the ball a ton last year. He still has Russell William, Russell Williams, Russell Wilson throwing him the ball. He still has two bad teams in that division, I expect. Um, he's a receiving threat out of... Uh, the backfield, just like a few of the other guys I've mentioned. And finally, he doesn't even really have to start the season as the RB1 on that team. If Carson were to start, I just think they have a lot more invested in a penny with that draft pick. I think he's a better receiver, and he really only has to flash one game or two, and he could earn that starting role, I think, fairly easily. Uh, he's, like I said, a young guy. They believe and invested a lot of capital in him. So I think that situation has a really good chance for Penny of vaulting him maybe into that low end RB1. Probably not that, obviously, but maybe an RB2 if he just gets that uh, role that we could pro probably expect. And finally, the last name I'm going to mention, obviously the riskiest name on this list, but it's he reminds me of Rashad Penny-esque is Ronald Jones. So Peyton Barber finished that year. Last year, as the 25th running back, he's a restricted free agent. Jacquez Rogers is a free agent. I'm going to assume they'll move on from him as his age. I love uh, Bruce Arians and the coach that they ended up getting now over there. I think uh, if Jameis can reach somewhat of his potential, you have Mike Williams, you have O.J. Howard. Um, if Deshaun Jackson's gone, you still have Adam Humphreys. I just think there's a lot of protection for that running game. And just like Penny, if we can assume maybe he starts the season as the starter or at some point breaks out, has a big game, and they want to just move on from Peyton Barber, I'm assuming a first-round pick like Ronald Jones is going to be given all of the opportunity in the world for this offseason and the start of next year to be that number one starting running back. And if he takes hold of that role, watch out. He could uh, definitely vault up and get into that RB2 uh late RB1 range if everything went well for him perfectly. So I think he's very well worth a name to be put on this list because of the ease, ease that he could move into the role of an RB1 and that role that could be provided for him if uh, that happens. Finally, I just uh, have to mention Le'Veon Bell, obvious name. If he goes to any of those teams, <clears throat> whatever team he lands on, He's going to be in that high-end RB1 talk. A lot of people are going to be arguing with that season off and that role on that team that he's going to receive. They're just going to feed him the ball, maybe take him number one. So you obviously have to mention Le'Veon Bell. And um, there's just a ton of names that I was looking at. 
and deciding who to mention in the last few names on the list. There's Josh Adams, who I expect to, him to be the number one starter on the Eagles, who have good prospects for next year. Gus Edwards, another name. Lamar Jackson in that role. Uh, Ido Smith. He only really has to pass a hurt. Devonta Freeman, they're going to move on from Tevin Coleman, who was a top 15 RB last year. Jarek McKinnon, Mark Ingram, Darius Geis. So many names that I could have bought in on. And for those, we'll just wait for future videos where I can analyze the offseason a little bit further and uh, we can further determine what their roles are going to be. But I appreciate you listening to the video, guys. It's been great discussing some jump candidates for next year. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video. And see you then.